All right, today I'm working on Google Apps Script and I'm gonna kind of do a whole little mini project start to finish. So sometimes you have a Google Drive folder that you want people to drop stuff into. So I used to, or I'm using a, a tool right now where people are just dropping files into that so we can collect a bunch of stuff and then repackage it and send it back out. But I'm collecting it from different people. I don't wanna have to manually go in and check that folder every time to see if anybody's added anything. So I'm gonna make a little demo project here. And this is a standalone script. It's not attached to a spreadsheet or anything, but we're gonna use Drive App today and an outside library called Object Store, uh, written by Adam Morris. And that's going to allow us to define an array of folders that we're gonna watch for updates. And you can set this to run on a trigger for every day or every hour, or however frequently you wanna run it. But there's kind of four things. So we're gonna take an array of objects. Each object is gonna have a type so we can get the correct class getter out of AppScript. I'm gonna give it a name for just readability and then a folder ID. And that folder ID is gonna let us get stuff. Uh, we're gonna store some properties using the property service. And we're gonna abstract that out using this object store library. So we'll come back to that. Then we need to compare the number of current files in that folder. So we're gonna open it up and see how many files are in there and then how many were stored in our properties. So when it runs, it's got something to check against. And then I'll show you how to send an email to yourself using Google Apps Script in the editor. So again, as always, if you just wanna see the completed code, you can get that from the description. I've got it saved there. Now, remember like all of this stuff is kinda, of, it's just, it just works. It's not something that's really robust and if it breaks, I'm not really gonna dive into problems, but it's all just through your account. You're not sharing access with anybody. Uh, so let's define a couple functions. So let's do call this main. We want a function to check the type of things. So this helps you extend out if you're watching a file, maybe like a spreadsheet and you want to see if there's new rows added. So we're going to do function check. Uh, what do I want to say? I'm going to call this check resource or actually let's call it get resource and we'll send it a resource object. So we'll come back to that in a minute. And this is the way I typically code is I'll kind of pseudocode out, get, make my function bodies, and then I'll build them as I need to go. Um, we're gonna do a function called register. We'll pass this a resource. And what this is gonna do is that's going to store or it's gonna create a new property for an object. So if we create a resource in that original array that doesn't exist yet, we can use this function to kind of just churn out what we need. And then the last one, we're going to set a const for our folders to watch and that's going to be an array of objects so we've got one there and remember using the type the name and a folder id so we do my type is going to be a folder the name this could be the project name would be the folder name so i'm just going to call this demo one and then the folder id we'll use that as a unique identifier so i've got a folder set up in google drive so let's go into this tracked folder. I'm just gonna grab that ID real quick and I'll paste that in there. And so to add more, if you had other things, remember this is utility, you just comma and add more objects on and on and on as you need to. Uh, so we'll just do the one for now. Okay, so I've got my array. Let's set up a, let's jump down to main. Um, so we're going to define a couple variables. Now when we're doing this, we need to, uh, let's use let file and we'll come back to that because we're gonna loop through this folder using drive app and we need to have like a file identifier. We'll come back to that in a little bit. So what we're gonna do is for main, so we're gonna set up a loop and I'm gonna use a for in loop. We'll call this for resource and folders to watch. So what that will do is it will define a scoped variable just to this loop called resource and that will be each object. So resource will have a type property, a name property and an ID. So let's call, let's set up a folder now. Let's, let's define another variable, so let folder. So we can just say folder equals, and now we're gonna call this get resource. Actually, instead of folder, let's call it, let's refactor a little bit. For item and folders to watch, we'll call this resource. Let's be generic with it in case we had files at some point. Resource equals get resource, and we'll give it the item. So now in get resource, we need to check a couple things. So we wanna check the type. So we're gonna use the type key, the type property here, and we'll access it and return that thing using drive app. So to get the resource, we're gonna just, I'm gonna use a switch statement here. And so the case would be, and I want the resource type. So if the case is folder, we're going to return drive app. So drive app gives you access to drive things and we're going to get folder by ID and we'll call 
resource ID. So remember this resource has got a folder ID right here. And so what I can do is if my type is a folder, I can call the appropriate method using drive app. So we're gonna get the folder by ID and return the actual folder object. And we can use that folder object then to loop through and get the files inside that folder. Um, and so let's throw one more case in here. So let's case file. So if I were to add an object um, and we do like a type file in here, then we would return a different. So we're gonna return drive app get file by ID. And then we still pass it the resource ID because that file would have its own ID. So this is a little bit of manual work for each, but because it's your own thing, you can just add them as you need them. The other way to do this would just be to have a spreadsheet of all of these. So you'd have a spreadsheet with the folder name and then the ID, and you could build out essentially a database that it just checks. Uh, but for standalone like this one, I'm just going to do it here. All right. So down here in my main function, we've got um, resource as the item. Now this is a folder. So I want to iterate. Now I'm going to actually, this is going to get bigger. So I'm going to jump this up here. So it's a little bit easier to see on the screen. Okay, so resource get item. Now we've got the folder. So we need to do a couple checks. So first of all, I want to get my stored property, I want to get however many files have existed in that thing. So we need to get this library. Now this is a library written by a guy named Adam Morris. And he is a Google developer expert. And he's got all kinds of great stuff here. So I'm going to get my ID. But what this does is it's an abstraction, it, it gives me a way to access objects either locally in memory using a map which is like super fast, or it lets you just put stuff in the cache or the property service. I'm gonna use that to abstract out a little bit because it takes care of permissions and it makes things, I can just define one variable. Uh, because I wanna use that, we're gonna do const store equals, actually we gotta add the library first, and then we can get some autocomplete. So I'm gonna paste the script ID in, we'll look it up. There we go. Let's get the most current version and you can call it what you want. I'll just keep it as object store. Object store. And then in the documentation, we want document user. We're gonna store in the script property because there's no document attached to it. And I don't really care across my user because it's only this script accessing it. And we're gonna persist key on the next execution. I'm gonna manually persist because it gives me a little bit more control over when I store that data. So we're gonna pass that manual true. So what I'm looking at is, we're gonna do our manual store. We're gonna create one and we'll use that manual true key. It's object store, I create, it's a script based man. We need an object and then it was just manual. There we go, manual true. Okay, so now I've got a global store object and what I can do for the resource, get the resource. Uh, because we're in the loop, I want to check to see if there's a store first. So let's do let stored equals um, store. And in this library, there's a get method. And all I wanna do is store data based on the key, the folder key, because those are unique already. So I can do store get. And what this is gonna do here, let's come up and make some notes. So we're going to store the count of files in a folder by folder key. So this would be one, two, three, four, A, B, C, D is my key. And then the count would be zero. That's an example of what we're going to store. So I wanna get the resource ID. So remember, we're looking at this resource is my thing. Actually, instead of resource ID, let's do item ID because that's my object. That's what I'm taking here. I want to store by that key. You could do it by resource ID, but then you'd have to access with the files. So we're just going to do it this way with my predefined object. Um, so let stored is stored get. So if, if stored doesn't exist, it'll return undefined if it doesn't exist. Let's do, we're going to register. So this is my function here. It's undefined right now. So we're going to register the item and let's pass it the item ID and it will return. I don't want to do this. So what I'm going to do, so I know I want to return store get. Eventually want to get that. So we need to store set resource ID and we're just going to set it to zero. Okay, resource file. And we're also going to stored up here. Okay, this is kind of the danger of coding live. So what we're doing is I've again defined a variable already up here. So let stored, we're going to set stored right now to get item ID. So if it exists, it's going to give me a, a count. So let's just do stored count. Let's rename this. I'm going to rename the symbol. Actually, okay. So if you've not used the new editor, so we're going to rename this symbol from stored to stored count. So it's a little bit more and it boom, updates everything, which is great. So my stored count is going to be stored get in the item ID. 
If that doesn't exist in my properties or in my cache or in a local map, it's gonna return undefined. Okay, so if it's undefined, here we go. If stored count is undefined, I wanna set stored count to register this thing. So in register, I'm gonna pass it the ID. We're gonna rename that ID because that's all I'm sending it. I don't need the whole resource to go. I just need the ID to go. So we're gonna set an ID and we're gonna give it a count of zero. You could also be more explicit with your object because it's just a count right now. I don't really care. And then I'm gonna return store get the resource ID. Before that though, because we're in manual mode up here, we need to store dot persist. So we'll save it there and then we'll return this resource ID. Great, so now stored count is set to that, that count. So it should be zero because I've set it to zero. Now, if stored count already ex exists, that's just gonna be some number, whatever number is in there. Okay, so for the item, we've got the resource. Remember, that's a direct reference here. So we've got a folder. I have checked my stored count. Uh, if it doesn't exist, we're gonna register that thing. We'll save it and then we'll return it. And I don't want resource ID, I just want ID. And now still in the loop, we actually need to check. So in Google Apps Script using the file iterator, when you access a folder, uh, I'm gonna say resource, get files. Now the autocomplete's not gonna work here because I'm returning a reference to that thing. It doesn't know what, what I'm returning. So I've used the documentation a ton of times to get this, but when you do get files, we're gonna do let file, actually I think I've already defined files. Let's do files and file. All right, I'll talk. I'll explain that in a sec. So we're going to do files equals resource get files. This is gonna give me a file iterator and then Google Apps Script, I'll show you. So if you just search drive app file iterator, it's essentially, it, it's, an iterable, it's an iterable that handles moving through that folder. Uh, so this file iterator, we're gonna pretty much take this structure and we're gonna update the count of files. I don't really care what they're called or anything. I just wanna know if there's new stuff in there. So back here, so files is my iterable. And in the documentation, you use a while loop because files has next will return true as long as there's another file in the folder as it iterates. If there's not, it returns false and your loop will exit. So while files has next, uh, we need to call files.next to iterate, we need to tell it to move to the next one. And all I wanna do is count plus plus. I haven't defined count yet. So back here at the top, let's do, or no, yes. No, that is what I want. Like count equals zero. So we're gonna start a new count and we'll compare it against our stored count. So while files has next, upgrade or update the count from zero to whatever an iterable. So now that we've got count set, and we actually don't need this file identifier anymore. And now here's where we finally get to the check. So we're still inside of this for loop. So if count does not equal stored count, let's do console log and we'll, we'll run a quick test. And let's throw some console logs in here so we can see what it's doing. So right now, this first time I run it, because nothing has been registered, this should come back, this first console log should be undefined. And then when we log it again, after we register it, it should be a zero, should give me a zero. So then we check our files, files has next, count. And if count does not equal stored count, so if our actual count is greater than or less than even the stored count, there's new files added. And let's just throw an else in here. We can console log, nothing has changed. Okay, now remember main is kind of orchestrating everything. So I'm not gonna run register. I'm going to run my main function. On a Mac command R, on Windows you can do control R and that'll run your function. But essentially it needs to be able to read your Google Drive. Okay, so start, get okay, files undefined. All right, so we do have an error, but we started, the starting count is undefined. That's what we thought, or no, that's not right. Starting, oh, not item in, item of. So that's why it was undefined because I looped it wrong. So let's try that again. Okay, here we go. So start, that's, so now we're looking at line 19, starting demo one, which is the name of my folder, so that was right. I have stored as null because there's been nothing stored. It was undefined, or it's, so it's not undefined, it's null, I was wrong on that. But then when we store it, now console log stored again, and it's set to zero. We run through console log, there are, are new files that that did not happen because nothing has changed. Our count is equal to our stored. Now, if I run it again, the stored null should go away. We'll see stored zero twice. Let me run this. 
There we go. So store to zero, store to zero, nothing has changed. So now what we need to do is handle this new files are added. Because if I don't update my cache, if I don't update my object store, then it'll send you an email every time. It's not gonna actually update. So we're gonna do a couple things. So if count does not equal store, this is triggering whatever changes. There's new files added. I want to do store set the item, item ID, and we wanna add, change it to count. So we're gonna take my thing, the ID of this resource we're currently using, and we're gonna set it to this new count variable. And that will update the, the, the store for this execution, but then I wanna do store persist. And that will write it to memory for a long-term long -term memory. Okay, so let's go to my Google Drive folder, and I'm going to add a Google Doc. Now, I don't care about the contents of the thing, I just wanna know that something is there. Now, let's send an email. Uh, you can use Mail app, and this is like a simplified mailer that runs from your account but doesn't have access to Gmail. So we're gonna do Mail app, send email, and it takes an object, and everything pops up here. So you can see we need an object with a two subject and a body. And you can use an HTML body and have some fancy stuff. I'll, I'll use HTML body and I'll inline some variables. So this is going to be two, Brian Bennett gmail.com and my subject and we'll use a template string here so new resource added to and this is why i put that name property in there item.name so that when you get that email it's it's not just a new resource was added and you have to figure out where you're going and then the html body because this is also dynamic we can file was added to your watched folder and then we can actually get the link so because i have a folder resource here my resource is a folder object back in my getter. Down here at the bottom, I returned the folder itself. I can actually send the, um, the folder. So I can do a resource, get URL, and that will send me a link directly to that folder. So I'm going to add one more folder or one more file real quick. So if I come back to my file watcher, now it is gonna ask me for permissions one more time because I've added mail app that needs some extra access. Okay, so we've authorized the script. It'll run. Again, I gotta clean up those. There's new files added, so it should have sent an email. Here we go. Here's the email. A file was added to your watched folder with a link, and hey, I've got an out preview here, and I can jump right to that folder. So again, a little utility script. It's helpful for me. Hopefully it's helpful for you. Obviously, I'll clean up the console logs and everything out, but if you want to get the copy of the script, it's in the link below. You can copy and paste it and do what you want with it, edit it, add to it. I'd be curious to hear how you extend it and see if you do something else with it. You can leave a comment or shoot me an email. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope this was enjoyable. I don't know if they are or not, but it's kind of helpful for me to kind of talk through these processes. If there's stuff you want to learn more about, let me know in the comments and I'd be happy to kind of work that into some of the stuff I want to talk about coming up. Thanks.